standing and standing as we read the scripture this morning. Scripture comes from 1 Peter 1, 17 to 23. If you invoke as God the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during this time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ, like that of the Lamb without defect or blemish. Jesus was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through Christ, though Christ you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God, now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth that you have genuine mutual love, love for one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and the enduring word of God. We got it a blessing to this reading. You may be seated. In this scripture, Peter is writing to the Jewish Christians who were driven out of Jerusalem and scattered throughout Asia Minor. And to all the people who believed in other places as well. This writing took place as Christians were being tortured and killed for their faith. Many of these Christians were overwhelmed, devastated, and their lives were out of control. Now, Peter knew about persecution, and he knew firsthand about it. He had been threatened and, of course, thrown in jail. He had seen other Christians die, and the church folks had been scattered. But Peter now knew that Christ was with him. And nothing could shake his confidence in the risen Lord. It was in this context that Peter spoke to these Christians who were struggling for their faith, giving them comfort and hope, and urging them to be loyal to Christ. With that in mind, I hope you find that you too can find comfort in Christ. Amen. Even if you haven't always been, let's say, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Many people today feel that their lives are out of control. They can't seem, seem to fix it. They can't fix it anymore. The primary interest is, is not to get to heaven, but to get through the day. They feel the pressure of life and feeling pulled from all different directions. As people of faith, we too may feel these same pressures at times. Maybe you are feeling them caving in on you, too. Maybe because you have issues with your family, or at work, or financially, or through sickness. These are many things that Satan likes to use to rob us, God's people, from living an abundant and a victorious life. I'm just here to tell you that, right up front. The obstacles that you face are obstacles that are put in your way. 
sometimes they're to test you, and most of the times, when you're on the other side of them, you realize they were for your own good. I know, I hate that. <laughs> The scripture in 1 Peter can apply to us just as it did to the Jewish folks then. In the preceding verses of Peter, Peter helps them to focus on their lives as people of faith. And that's what I try to do is I try to encourage you to focus on your life as a person of faith and how it is that you should live as a person of faith. To prepare your mind for action, to set your hope fully on the grace that is given to you. Do not conform to the evil desires in the world that you ha that as you lived before you knew better. Now some of us, we sometimes we know better, but we don't do better. I mean, that's human nature. Yeah. Just as the one who has called you is holy, Peter says of Christ, be holy for I am holy. I mean, that's kind of been my mantra this week as I was preparing for this. I, th this scripture struck me, be holy for I am holy. Now, I know that I'll never be like, the, like, like God or Mother Teresa or any of those holy folk, but... I can be holy as God has called me to be holy. You can be holy as God has called you to be holy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Peter, what Peter is saying is as people of faith, you have been given something more. That's right. And much more to what much, much is given, much is required. You must seek positive changes in the way you live. Because you are God's, you can live different than those who are living in sin. And I hope you do live different than those that are living in sin. There are some instructions that Peter gave that can still apply to us today. And so from, I say, the Methodist um, way, there's three things that I want to talk about today. <laughs> Number one. Number one. <laughs> Live as a person on an incredible journey. Yes. yes. Live as a person on an incredible journey. As a pilgrim. And not a tourist. We are to live our lives in reverential fear of God who judges each one of us. Now, sometimes, I'm not talking about my judgment on, all, in, on anybody. I'm talking about God's judgment for us. Because you know what? God's going to judge us. And we ought not to judge other people. Amen? Amen. So if we're going to get in the business of judging, then we need to start with ourselves. And stop with ourselves. Because <laughs> that's a big picture. <laughs> but our, our lives here are, is a truly an opportunity to live out this incredible journey. We can go through our life as a sightseer, a tourist, an explorer, a landowner, a pilgrim, and a <coughs> sojourner. A sojourner is a temporary resident. A biography of Mother Teresa says this, that she never traveled to other countries as a tourist, but as an emissary for the poor. She always traveled as a pilgrim. The difference between a tourist and a pilgrim is that the tourist looks around, samples things, makes no impact. A pilgrim or a person living out on a journey has a purpose for being there. As we go through the journey of our life, we must be clear about our purpose and our mission. 
we are on in order to stay focused and not get sidetracked by the things that try to distract us. We can make it a day we can make it day by day if our sights are set on the purpose and the goal that we are looking forward to. Not willy-nilly, don't have any idea what you're going to do, but a purpose and a goal. We can endure undesired conditions if our eyes, within our eyes, we can see the end result somewhere in the future. For example, we all like paydays. Oh, yeah. So that's something in the future. Or maybe it's graduation day for some of you in high school and college. Maybe you're wanting to get that next promotion at work. So you have a desired condition for something in the future. Do you sit back and you, you wait for that to happen? No. No. You got to work for it. You put your hand to the plow and you don't look back. You do what you have to do. You do it day by day. Let me share with you a Powerful scripture, if you're taking notes, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7, says this. For the sovereign God will help me. Right off the bat, hey, that's good news. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. Now, I'm not going to get confused. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. You know what it means to set your face like flint? Flint is fire. I'm going to be on fire. I'm going to turn toward it. I'm going to look to it, and I'm going to be on fire. This girl is on fire. And I know that I am not ashamed. That's right. Can you honestly say, that was a God give me. <laughs> Can you honestly say with all of you, with all that's in you, that you have set your life in the right direction? Are you on purpose? Or are you just like the tourist walking by, taking pictures? but not making an impact. I want to remind you, saints, that Psalms 23 says to us and assures us that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So you got to walk through some things. Amen? Amen. you got to walk on through. That's right. It doesn't say, yay, though I stop. <laughs> I think if you stopped, guess where you'd be? Oh, Death. Oh, right. I don't know about you, but I want to keep walking. That's right. There you go. I will fear no evil because God is with me. Knowing that God is with us in our journey makes it a lot easier to keep on going. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. And having a purpose to travel makes the inconveniences and the problems along the way a lot easier to bear. Number one, live as a person on an incredible journey as a pilgrim. Number two, live as a new person in Christ. Live as a new person in Christ, not as an old unredeemed person. Now, this scripture used silver and gold as a, as a symbolism. Silver and gold are considered precious and very valuable in our society. And verse 18 says, you must know and recognize that you were not redeemed from the useless, fruitless ways of life of corruptible things such as silver and gold. 
but you were purchased with the blood of Christ, like a sacrificial lamb without a blemish or a spot. So when the silver and gold are gone, you will still remain. Let me just say, when these words, like redeemed, because sometimes it makes me go, Ugh. when words like redeemed are used, because it's kind of like one of those right-wing words that people use to bash others with. Sometimes people turn a deaf ear. I don't want you to turn a deaf ear. It's, it's, it's old school language. And I want to just remind us this morning that at this time, when this word redeemed was used, it meant that someone <laughs> paid money to buy his or her freedom. That's what it meant. But God freed us and our sin with the precious blood of Jesus. Yeah. It's not something that we can buy our way out of. Living as a person of faith in Christ is truly an eternal destination. Our lives have meaning and purpose, even if you don't know exactly what it is right at this very moment. Because we are freed from the sins and the chains that bound us. And we are able to exercise our life in a new way because of that freedom. John 8.36 reminds us, If the Son shall make you free, you are free indeed. You don't need the silver and gold to make you free because Jesus did it for you. Amen. And that's the glory of of God given to each one of us so that we can come to know Christ, come to know the one whose we are. We can come into this personal relationship. We are more than conquerors. If you, one of my favorite texts in all the scriptures is the book of Romans chapter 8, that whole chapter. If you get bored one day and you have a pity party, open to Romans 8. And I'll tell you what, if you're not encouraged then I need to come over and shake you up a little bit. Because <laughs> Romans 8 will get you fired up because it reminds us that we are more than a conqueror That's through right. Christ who loves us. Right. And that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Right. And we are conquerors. You have the ability to see succeed every day. Each and every day you have the ability to succeed. Stake the claim on your freedom. I personally have my struggles, but I know this. I know for a fact, as sure as I'm standing here, that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me. I'm staking my claim. I'm not giving up. I am a conqueror in Christ. What about you? Number three. Live with inward strength, not outward structure. The gospel message of John 3.16 has been fulfilled in our lives as we believe in Jesus. It says, whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. Of course, we know that. And the resurrection is understood through our personal experience. Each one of us in this room has a different experience, and that is so powerful. Your experience is what makes you you, what makes God able to use you in such special ways. You bring something that nobody else can bring to the table, you see? Yes. You are important in that inward way. We, we won't be... Uh, caving in over every little thing that comes our way when we tap into that. Jesus' resurrection is the foundation of our faith. And it spurs us on to where we should go and how we should serve. Or, or is it that we just give lip service of our faith? Because saints... Lip service will not last. I'm just here to tell you. Lip service will not last. 
I want to give you an example this morning. Just the other day, I had somebody tell me that they went to church. And I asked them, well, where do you go to church? Well, they couldn't remember the name of the church. You better remember the name of our church. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, who's the pastor of the church? And they couldn't remember Whoa. the name of the pastor. <laughs> you better remember I know. the name of the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Some folks say they belong to Valley Ministry but hardly ever come to church. These same folks complain because we don't offer enough. We've had people that I've met maybe once or twice here but claim Valley Ministries as their church. If you're out there, we want you to come to church. <laughs> See, sometimes people who like to complain are the very ones who never lift a finger to help. That's right. And never given service or resources. I told someone in my office this week if if everyone gave even five dollars a week, we would never have to ask for money, ever. If everybody just gave, we would. Wouldn't that be great if I didn't have to ask for an offering? I would love that. If everybody just was convinced in their heart that this is God's promise and purpose, and we're called to give, we could do away with the offering time. Baskets are up front. Leave your money. But anyways. So the body of faith, whether it's Valley Ministries and Saints, we're not the only ones, or if it's any other church, let me tell you, is only as strong as the faithful members make it. We're only as strong as you make it. We're, you're only, we're only as strong as you make it. Are we perfect? No. Have we made mistakes? Yes. yes. Will we make mistakes? Yes. yes. Will, can we overcome them? Yes. yes. But we can't if you take your toys and go home. <laughs> the thing about it is, is that we can work through anything because Christ is the foundation of this church. That's right. That Jesus is the head of this church. That's right. And Jesus will draw everybody to us. That's right. And we have to then be more like Christ in the process. This is the inward strength I'm talking about. We come together, we're called to assemble together for a purpose. Not to gossip and backbite and all of that. And that's, you guys, I have to commend you, it's been a lot, lot better. Thank you very much. We work on, if you have an offense with somebody, you go in love with to them. You don't go around their back. That's right. If you have an offense with somebody, you go directly to them. And how many of you know that's hard? <laughs> it's hard. But man, does it work. It works. And that builds spiritual maturity on the inside. Because the outward structure tells you to gossip and backbite and to go behind and try to get that person fired because they did this and so. No. I'm talking about a different way. A spiritual way. Our relationship to the church must be a vital one. One in which we are there. In the presence. Fully in presence with our membership. With our resources with us because you have something to give. These things about the outward structure, you must decide where to put your hope and your faith in the living, resurrected Christ. It's your lifestyle. 
The Old Testament character Enoch was said to walk with God. That, I'd like that to be my nickname. <laughs> I'd like to be known as someone who walks with God. This was the way he journeyed his life. This is how he journeyed. He walked with God. We need to be committed not only to God, but to our church and to one another as we can learn to grow and find the inner strength that's necessary. We must continue to take advantage of the message of hope and faith that is preached and taught for our benefit. I want to close this morning with this powerful testimony. And I found this... Um, as you know, Ronnie, our friend, went to Zimbabwe, South Africa. She's there now, and she's sending some pictures if you, on Facebook, you see. But there's, I was looking at some stuff from Zimbabwe, and I happened upon this testimony of this young preacher from Zimbabwe, and he puts it so great. And so I pray that I can do it justice. Here is what he said. I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit's power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with the low living, sight walking, small plannings, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tamed visions, worldly talking, cheap living, and dwarfed goals. I no longer need a position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have the right I don't have to be right. I now live by faith. I lean on God's presence, walk by patience, am uplifted by heaven. My road is narrow and my guide reliable. I will not be detoured, lurked away, turned back, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitant in the presence of my enemies, ponder at the pull of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, <laughs> shut up, let up, until I've stayed up, stored up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus, and I must go until he comes, give till I drop, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will not have a problem recognizing me because my banner will be clear. Amen. Is your banner clear this morning? Are you living as a pilgrim and not as a tourist? Are you living as a new person of Christ? Are you living the inward strength and not of the outward structure? Is your banner held high? I don't know about you, but my banner is held high. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.